What's up guys? Welcome to another video. We're going to be doing uh, some interesting work with a Bluetooth module. We're going to be doing a how-to on uh, working with Bluetooth. I know a lot of you have been excited for this. Uh, I've been seeing that in my comments and messages that you guys have been waiting for it. So here it is. Finally got it all put together and tested. So now I'm ready to do a video to show you guys how to use it. Okay. What we are going to be using is we are going to be using the Bluetooth module RN42DS. Got the data sheet up here. Um, it is, like it says, fully qualified Bluetooth version 2.1 module. Um, it's 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 kind of expensive. I'm not I'm not going to say it's like super expensive. I mean it's it's under twenty dollars, but still it's when you get stuff that's you know not a buck or two. You know I probably don't want to put it in something that's going to be used for mass production. But if you're just wanting to tinker with it, if you're wanting to build like, let's say a remote controlled cars type thing, or you're wanting to build some way to send uh, text between two different devices uh, through your embedded device and let's say your phone or your computer or whatever that's Bluetooth enabled, your um, iPad, uh, whatever, you know, you can uh, use this little module and it's actually pretty slick. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is you guys can read the data sheet just as good as I can. I'm gonna zip down through here because what I want to get to is, well, there's, there's a good pin out here and it can do a lot of things. What's cool is that it can do um, RS-232. It has an RS-232 module on as well as USB it has a USB uh, uh, pins on it so it'll actually talk uh, USB which is pretty cool you got both best of both worlds but this is what I want to show you was basically the uh, schematic they even give you a simple schematic which is just so fantastic I really enjoy this little chip that's the reason I you know it might be it might be a little more than what you could find or what you could make yourself but still you know it's, it's pretty good. It's all laid out straightforward for you. So anyway, what we're looking at here, I'm going to walk you through it real quick. Uh, they've got, I don't know, some power here that looks like they're taking 5 volt in, regulating it to 3 volt to power this thing. Uh, they're also, they've got some peripheral, uh, they got an RS-232 connector, um, some uh, a header or something they're bringing some pins out to. Um, I didn't connect that. Um, they, here's the main chip. They just put it like almost like an IC chip so you can uh, see the numbering of it. And basically over here they're using for this demo and for my demo that I'm going to be doing, I'll be doing just the RS-232 side of things. Um, I don't know. Uh, leave me some comments if you guys would like to see how the USB side of things works. Um, I'm sure I can put that together and, and figure that out. But um, anyway, for right now we're just doing uh, serial uh, communication um, via Bluetooth. So you basically need um, since the Bluetooth module is TTL, it's uh, it's got the it's a three volt uh, system. It's a three three volt system. Obviously, you need some sort. Of, you need the transceiver chip, you know, to get it up to the uh, plus twelve minus twelve volt uh, logic for uh, serial communication. So we use the good old Max two thirty two. Looks like they're using a Cypex uh, two thirty two. It's just same same difference. You know, lots of different companies make this, but you just need a 232 RS-232 transceiver chip is all you need. They'll convert the TTL to uh, RS-232. And if you check some of my uh, old videos, um, I show you how these work and all that fun stuff but that's all that we're doing here is just setting that on there and these pins and stuff correspond with the RS-232 connector uh, that's right here I also went ahead and put um, I'm gonna call them the configuration uh, bits I just had a uh, DIP you know just a dip switch a set of dip switches and it just needs four um, normally you'd probably set these with the resistors because you probably design in this to operate in a certain mode but it, it gives you um, it gives you some options. It works on GPIO pin 4, 3, 6, and 7. And if we buzz up here real fast, I can give you kind of a synopsis of what this does. So 4 is a reset to factory defaults. So basically, um, if you uh, pull this to a high, it will reset the whole thing to factory default. So that's just a reset. So you can put you know, a little momentary push button switch on that. Then uh, GPIO 3 is the auto discovery. Um, 
it's got a uh, it's got a weak pull down by default. This is what it's saying that it is. If you don't do anything with it, um, you don't even hook up the pins. This is what it does. It's got a weak pull down on the inside. So if you want it to be on auto discovery, um, you can change that up. Uh, let's see where was the other one. I think it's in this other menu. You got six and seven. Uh, six is um, setting it to master, where it's it, it, if you turn it to high, it'll be in auto master mode. Um, and then the weak pull down is where it's at. It's not in master mode. It's in a slave mode. So you might do that, like if you're wanting to, yeah. Well, like I said, if you're wanting it to be in master mode, where stuff connects to it to interface with something, you know, you can set it in master mode. And then uh, the GPIO 7 is the only one that I've kind of played with, and it's basically the baud rate. This thing can do uh, two different baud rates. I think it's the, what is it, 15200? Yeah, I think 15200, well, yeah, the well, it's right there, 11.5K. Okay, so yeah, it's the 11.15200 or something, or 115.200, I think, you know, is what the uh, uh, standard baud rate is because uh, it's it's weak pulled down uh, in its default position. So if you don't hook this pin up at all, its baud rate will be uh, 1,000 uh, or 115,200, you know, BPS or whatever. Uh, otherwise, if you pull this to a high, it'll be 9,600 baud. So depends on what transfer rates I, I say go for the fastest rate you know unless for some reason you have a uh, the other device that's connecting to it on the other end can only do 9600 then I you know you could pull this up to a high and force it to 9600 but you know I just left it at the uh, at the high speed because you know I mean why not and have the high speed you know right so that's really all uh, those dip switches can do for you is just give you some some different configurations that you can set on the fly um, and actually, I, I say on the fly, it's not really on the fly. You have to set them and then power cycle it, and it'll come up uh, with whatever settings that you, you've you set with the dip switches. But like I said, you'd probably design, whatever system you're designing, you'd probably pick a specific uh, mode of operation, I guess you would say, and you just set them with resistors. Basically cut these switches out and just use resistors to pull up the ones you need to pull up, and then just leave the other ones floating since they have internal weak pull downs by default. So that's what I would do. Um, I've also installed the two LEDs. There's a green LED and a blue LED. The green LED will flash at different rates, and there's even a table up here that'll tell you what rates mean, you know, what else. If it flashes slow, it means one thing. If it flashes fast, it means another thing. And then the blue light, obviously, the blue light comes on when it is actually connected uh, to whatever device you're connecting to it. I didn't bother with the SPI header, even though it does have a SPI inter uh, interface to it. You can uh, talk uh, over that protocol too. It's just it, it's an all-around great chip that has a lot of different uh, ways and avenues to communicating with it. Now, like I said, if if you're really wanting to build stuff for mass production, what I would recommend doing is maybe do your development and testing with something like this. But I'd probably go with a more uh, straightforward like if you're going to do us you know you're going to do usb you know you're going to um, probably communicate with it over spy or spi so a peripheral interface um, then you know you may want to build something that's specific to that because it'll be a lot cheaper this guy uh, the reason he's he's a little more expensive is because he's got uh, he's got so many different options that you can configure on it which makes it very versatile so i mean you know it's it's still a good thing i enjoyed this as you know just doing this stuff for youtube and on the side uh little side projects and things that i have uh fantastic because you can use it in one thing take it out and use it in something else in fact here's those uh rates so the one hertz toggle rate is um, it's discoverable and waiting for a connection, obviously, and if it's 10 uh, hertz, then the module is in command mode. So basically, if it flashes really fast, it's in command mode, and so on and so forth. And if it's low, it's connected to another device, and yada, 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 yada. So anyway, what I did, I want to show you this, okay, is I went ahead and in EagleCAD, I drew up um, basically a testing board essentially what I did was I put a voltage regulator down I think this is a SOT 123 or something like that package and put down all the necessary uh, components uh, to to build a regulator if if I wanted to you know and honestly I don't, I don't think I did I think I just hooked it up straight to the power supply set it to 3 3 volts and called it good but um, the main thing is this is this piece I took the chip and made a footprint for this chip 
and then um, brought it out to some headers. So I could basically make it like a plug-in device where you could plug it into a breadboard. And you'll see that because that's the way I've got it wired up. You'll see that in the demo uh, of it uh, that I've got it plugged into breadboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board. Here's the board. I was able to fit everything on the top layer, which is fantastic. It makes scribing a board very painless when it's all on one side. Um, here is up here is the stuff for the regulator. So there's the uh, SOT package for the regulator and the various resistors and capacitors, as well as three different test points is what I use to uh, for you to be able to um, hook up, let's say, a power supply. Uh, you could hook up the, uh, I can't remember which ones are which. I think it's, this one's ground. The, yeah, this one's ground. This one's like your 5 volt coming in, and then this is your 3 volt coming out, so you can measure that or whatever you want to do. But basically, I built that up here, and then this is the footprint for the actual package that sits down here, and then, just, like I said, I just brought it out to all these uh, vias that you can uh, put some, and they're all 10th inch spaced. Okay, and then the spacing between the two sides is, I can't remember exactly the dimension, but basically it will, it will fit in a breadboard. You know, that breadboard, how it's on a 10th inch by 10th inch grid, that's basically how I laid this out. So it'll actually snap in to a breadboard um, uh, once you solder uh, some straight through-hole headers in. So anyway, that's what it is. I have also put this, uh, made a PDF of it, and um, I'll be putting that on my project code page. So um, the PDF will be up there. So, and what I've done with the PDF is, I don't know if those of you that don't know, I'm probably gonna upload a video uh, either before or after this one. So it depends on when you're viewing this. I may have already uploaded it, but um, on uh, scribing a board again, because I, I did that in the past. I have past videos on it, but I wanted to do it uh, again for you guys so you guys could see it uh, and have it all all a fresh you know video of that of how to scribe a PCB using the toner transfer method and the way the PDF is drawn now I'll upload the cat these Eagle CAD uh, drawings up as well so you guys can uh, finagle with it uh, rearrange it move it around do whatever you want uh, with it uh, on your own or maybe just click on the footprint and save the footprint to your own library. So I'll, I'll upload these files too. The schematic and the board layout I'll upload to the project code link as well so you guys have all of the stuff to play with. But if you want to just straight away um, print out the, the print this out on your toner uh, printer and uh, go ahead and just do the toner transfer and make the board. Uh, I went ahead and printed it off as a PDF and if you notice um, what you'll have to do, since you have to flip this over to put it onto the copper board, you have to print it out mirrored. And what's cool about Eagle Cat is it has an, a mirrored option. So your PDF that you'll download from me if you go to uh, the project code link and download it, which it, it'll be up by the time you see this video, it, it'll be up there. Um, but check it out, you download the zip and it'll be in there and it'll actually be mirrored to where you don't have to do anything. You just have to print it out. If you want this exact... Uh, footprint layout here then just download the PDF open it up put the uh, the specific paper in the printer and print it out and you'll have you'll have what you need to go ahead and uh, scribe your board with so anyway that does it for the hardware uh, side or at least the explanation of that let's go ahead and get to the best part and let's get to let's get to some demo time all right so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll stop the video here and we'll pick it back up with the demo thanks guys